Hello everyone, thanks for checking out my video. Today I thought I'd show you how to set up a swap file for your Linux VPS. This is for most of you who are running masternodes and maybe want to run more than one masternode per VPS. The nice thing about a swap file is essentially it allocates a portion of hard drive space as RAM so that you can use it for additional resource needs. So for instance, if you were to install two or three masternodes on the same VPS, then you would be able to take advantage of that swap file as RAM space for whatever computations need to be done for those other masternodes. So let's take a look at some of the details about this and then I'll just go through the command line with you step by step how to prepare and set this thing up. So here we are over on the Volter website. This is the provider that I use for most of my VPSs. I have found them to be very reliable and I've been very happy with their service. They may not be the least expensive out there, but as far as quality of service, uptime and bandwidth and everything else, I've been very happy with this. So um, if you wanna learn more about them, I'll leave a link down in the description. But for right now, what we're looking at here are the options for the different VPSs that we can configure. And the first option is for $2.50 a month, you can have a single CPU, half a gig of RAM, 500 gigabytes of bandwidth, and then a 20 gigabyte SSD, which is pretty good. I mean, if you're dealing with an altcoin masternode that does nothing but verify transactions on a blockchain, <laughs> then this is more than capable of handling all of that. In fact, you know, if people are using Raspberry Pis to you know, run nodes, <laughs> you can definitely use this. Not even going to be an issue. Um, and, and I would even venture, you could probably get away with adding at least two master nodes to this option. Okay. As it is, <laughs> but let's suppose you want to add more than that, or you want to be able to provide a little bit more resources for a coin that is making more use of a master node. Maybe it's using it for payment gateways, or maybe it's using it for processing something else or dApps or something like that. Um, you're, you're, it really depends on the project. Okay. So you got to know your project first and what those requirements are going to be. But if it's just the bare bones basic master node, this is more than enough, okay? My go-to option has been this $5 a month option, mostly because of increased memory and twice the bandwidth, plus five more gigs on the SSD. Now what's nice about this is that, let's suppose we wanna sort of allocate roughly, I don't know, and this might be overkill for several master nodes, but let's say we had five gigs per master node, which is, you know, plenty of room to grow, um, then we could very easily with the installation of Ubuntu, probably get away with four master nodes on this one VPS, which is pretty cool. But we're going to want to allocate some space for additional RAM because eventually that one gig of RAM is probably going to run pretty thin uh, when you got four master nodes competing for resources there. Uh, but if we can utilize that swap file, then that will probably not only improve the efficiency of this, but it'll give you the extra room and the space requirements needed to make it happen. So I'm going to take you through the whole process. All right. So let's go ahead and set one of these up. All right. Now that I got that set up, I got my IP address and my password. I'm going to go into putty and log in. One of the first things I like to do with a brand new setup is install all of the updates. You can do that very simply by typing apt get space update ampersand ampersand apt get upgrade tack y. All right, that whole command line will scan for updates and then automatically install them provided they are there. Now I've already done that, so we should be in good shape here. The next thing that you would want to do is check if there is a swap file. So simply what you could do is type in this command swap on space tac tac show and nothing. Okay, so that's an indication that there is no swap file. And the way to double check that again would be to type free space tac h. 
And what this does is shows us how much memory is available, how much memory is used, how much is free, and whether or not we have a swap file, which clearly we don't. It's all zeros here. Okay. So all we need to do then is make sure we have enough space available for our swap file. So let's do this command df tech h. This command basically shows us our file system. And what we're looking for here is this device right here. This, this, the DEV folder is your device folder. And this VDA1 is your SSD. You can tell that because it says 25 gigs right here under the size. So that's our actual hard drive. And we've already used two gigs for Ubuntu, and the remaining here is 22 gigs. Now, the general rule with a swap file is that you would use one and a half times your RAM size. So if you have one gig of RAM, you would use a 1.5 gig swap file. And that's all well and good. I just want to be able to provide the most amount of resources possible and still get away with, you know, leaving enough space for all the master nodes that I want to run. So in this case, let's say we actually want to run about four master nodes. Well, what I'm going to suggest here then is to create a swap file that's three gigs. This way you'll have your one gig of active RAM, your three gigs of swap RAM, and that'll bring you to a theoretical total of about four gigs, which is pretty cool. And that'll leave you 20 gigs for all of your other master nodes. The next thing would be to actually allocate that space for a swap file. So to do that, we're going to type in f allocate space tac l space and then the amount which is 3g. And notice that's a capital G, okay? And then we're going to put a forward slash swap file and push enter, all right? And then we're going to modify that particular swap file. Um, with new permissions, all right, we're going to we're going to do ch mod space 600 permissions, all right, and then a space forward slash swap file, all right. So we've given this swap file the permissions of read write, and that's it. There's not going to be any executing going from from this particular swap file. Only the operating system is going to have access to it, all right. And the next thing we're going to do is actually make a swap file. We're going to tell the system that this this file that we've created is our actual swap file it doesn't know that right now all we've done is create a file and the way you can tell is if you do a ls tac a um oh wait a minute it's in our root folder ls tac a and see how that says swap file right there so the file's here but it's just a file it's just an empty file and we've allocated it for three gigs. So it's basically a, a chunk of the hard drive right now. Um, what we would have to do to make it um, a swap file for the operating system is MK swap space forward slash swap file. All right, see how it says this? Setting up swap space version one size is three gigabytes. All right, it already knew that because that's what the size of this file was. All right, no label, no biggie. All right. Next thing is we're going to turn it on. So we're going to type swap on space forward slash swap file. All right. Now swap files on. And if you want to double check that, just type free space tech H. All right. And look at that. Now we have our total available memory. And then of course our swap file right underneath of that now says three gigs. Okay. So we're not using it just now because, well, I don't have anything running on this just yet. But that is how you get this thing up and running and how you can double check it. Now, the only problem is right now it doesn't start up automatically. So if you were to reboot this, your swap file would not automatically be initiated. So what we do is add a couple of different lines to different files. All right. The first one is fstab. And this is actually a pretty easy um add all you have to do is type in echo space single quotation here which is forward slash swap file none swap sw zero zero now i'll put all of this down in the description so you can just copy and paste it. it'll make it a lot easier space pipe sudo t you don't really have to put the sudo here but i'm just copying this from 
a website of which I will leave a link down there so you can see it yourself. But this particular command right here will add this chunk to the fstab file. All right, and we'll double check that once we put it through, but I'm gonna hit enter. All right, now if I wanna see that, I can type in cat space forward slash etc fstab. Okay, now what this does is it initializes a few things. First of all, it, it initializes the hard drive. It initializes a floppy drive, which must be part of the, the virtual environment that Volter uses probably just to load drivers or something like that if they needed to in a pinch. And then of course, the one that we just added right here, our swap file, all right? And there's just a couple of different um, features. You can see like exactly what these parameters are. So um, in our case, the mount point is what we're seeing, a swap file. Um, and then what type is it? It's swap options, you know, and all this stuff is being passed right through. So. It's in there. It's going to work on reboot. Don't worry about it. The next thing we're going to do is edit our system control file so that we can sort of increase the efficiency of the swap file. By default, the swap file is going to be kind of sluggish. Um, it on purpose doesn't allow itself to be read and write to very quickly um, because it's trying to find like a happy medium to balance out performance, but we want this to be as snappy as possible because we are truly using it as RAM, right? So what we're gonna do is type in nano space forward slash etc ctl.conf, all right? It's a configuration file for your system control. And we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom, all right? Just use the down arrow, okay? You can't use your mouse here. and we're going to type in the, the following two. This is the very end, okay? Uh, and if you want to even put a little like reminder to yourself, you can put a, a little hashtag uh, swap configuration just so you know, all right? And then enter, put in vm dot swappiness equals 10, okay? The default is 50, which is kind of sluggish so put that one in that's going to reduce it hit enter next one is vm dot vfs cache pressure equals 50 the default here is a hundred so we are reducing both of these by well uh, quite a substantial amount actually to kind of improve it so that's all you need for there then what you're going to do is press control X and it's going to ask if you want to save yes or no, say yes. And then it's going to ask what file name, just leave it as the default push enter. All right. And that puts you back out. Now what we want to do is reboot this. So what we're going to do is type in sys ctl reboot and is it, oh shoot, it's a uh, system D reboot my bad excess arguments uh, is it is it sys control oh for the love of everything sacred why do i always forget this just type reboot <laughs> and then hit okay okay and just for the record it's system ctl space reboot so anyway um I'm getting a notice here that there are some packages that could be updated, some security updates, stuff like that. Um, you can take care of that on your own. I've already shown you that command. But what we want to check for right now is whether or not our swap file is actually on, okay? So what we're going to do is just that very simple swap on space tac tac show to see if the swap file has been initialized and looks like it has been. And all is good. So now we are good to go ahead and install all of the master nodes that we want to on this particular server. So that's pretty much it for me guys, how to create your Linux swap file. Now you can do this for your existing master nodes. No need to start from scratch or anything like that. Just go ahead into your putty terminal and follow the commands like I showed you. 
and you should be up and running. That'll help improve the efficiency of your current master nodes, as well as provide you a little additional resources should they need them as projects start using them more. Uh, hopefully we'll see more projects that are creating not only exchanges, but decentralized apps that take advantage of these added resources and whatnot. So I hope you found this helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe, ding the bell, come join the Discord server. We'll talk a little bit over there and all the links are down below. So uh, have at it guys, let me know how you do and I'll see you in the next video. God bless. <laughs>